Here are five amazing techniques to style and make your motion graphics the absolute best in After Effects. All right, the first style we'll break down will allow you to create any white dominant scene with beautiful, colorful effects with a touch of new amorphism. So specifically, we just need a single master element like a circle or any shape for that matter and also have a nearly white background. Now with your main element, right click and go to layer styles to add a gradient overlay. All we need to do is use two slightly different light gray colors to make the shape stand out. Now, you can go back and add a bevel and emboss. Now very simply, max out the highlight and shadow opacities and set the colors to white and the shadow mode to screen to give you this very nice white edge, which will stand out due to the gradient overlay. Now to give this a colorful accent shadow, duplicate the shape, delete all the layer styles on the bottom copy and then scale it up by a touch. Now for the first effect, let's use the four color gradient. Try using the same color three times with a single primary color to help this stand out. Great. Now throw down the Gaussian blur effect and use a really high amount. And finally, try using the radial wipe transition effect. This will allow us to isolate a small area of the colorful shadow while feathering this out like we just won't stop. Now, if you like, you can animate the angle to have this spin around, whatever you want to do. And finally, for an extra detail, you could duplicate this layer again, delete the gradient, and then use the drop shadow effect at the top with a low opacity and a large softness to add that extra depth to your accent shadow style. And this just looks absolutely amazing and produce amazing work with my free Premiere Pro and After Effects templates, drag and drop seamless transitions and cinematic motion graphics that you can customize to fit your vision and moments. You can access thousands of templates and presets directly with the Motion Duck extension and produce masterpieces for yourself and clients in no time with these countless assets linked below. And if you do pick up anything, you will be supporting my channel. So thank you very much. All right, I believe this is the very best style glass I've ever done and creating this soft glass style is amazing for those bright scenes as well. Once again, all you need is a shape or an object and then straight away duplicate it and then turn off the copy. Right click the top layer and again add the bevel and emboss. Kind of the same technique as before, but this time we'll set the fill opacity under the advanced blending to 0%. This way only our layer styles will show. Now for the bevel, mess around with say a depth of 200%. Use a low size and you know a low soften amount. Then set the shadow mode to screen and the color to white. But ultimately, feel free to mess around with these settings until you're happy with your edge. There are no exact settings to use here. But I would also consider adding an inner glow and then set the source to center and use a gray color with a low opacity and size to make your glass stand out. Now, here's where the power of this effect comes into play. We need an adjustment layer and straight away set the matte daemon to the other duplicated shape that we created earlier. <laughs> But most importantly, let's have some fun with the effects. I like to start off with this scatter effect and set this to a good amount until you get some, you know, broken noise like this. Then I like to use the CC radial blur effect with a fading zoom and another good blur amount. And another blur I like to use for this effect is the Gaussian blur effect. And if you want some texture on your glass, try using the compound blur effect as well. There's a lot of blurs here, but they all work together. Now for the compound blur, you will need a texture image that you can set the blur to and then just mess around with the blur level. Additionally, you can mess with the curves effect and the tint effect to help dial in the color behind your glass. Obviously, don't overwhelm yourself with these effects and just use what you think looks best. Now for a softer, you know, glass effect, if you will, let's create another adjustment layer and throw down the glow effect. We'll use a high radius and adjust the threshold as needed. But most importantly, we can really see this come together when we set the glow settings to screen. And if you like, duplicate the effect, adjust the glow settings until you create this soft glowing glass style that will push anything out of focus that's under the glass. Okay, this third motion graphic style is all about delivering a high-end finish to any motion graphic scene. You guessed it, just start with any shape. Which in my case, it just tends to be a circle, but for this, we'll use the regular gradient ramp effect, but you know, it doesn't really matter how you use a gradient. Set the colors to two distinct dark colors with a radial ramp and then spread them apart to evenly fill the shape. We can also try using the gradient ramp effect on the background to pull our eyes to the center. Now, we can also add bevel and emboss, like a boss. <laughs> this time, we'll set the highlight mode to multiply and the color to black with a normal size to give us a slight black border. 
I would also go back and add a drop shadow layer style with an opacity around say 70% and a size around 50. Now one thing I like to have here is a stroke for some separation so duplicate this, delete the layer styles with a gradient and set the shape layer to stroke only. And we'll use a blue color to help match the current palette. Great. And then let's punch this out with the glow effect. Increase the threshold and radius as needed. And of course, duplicate the effect and increase the radius for a subtle look. And because this is a shape layer stroke, we can use the trim path property to cut the line down by a touch and the keyframe the offset to add some extra animation to the scene. As a quick bonus tip, if you have a primary graphic on top, try using a gradient overlay to help enforce the current color palette. Looking good, but we need to hone in on this look with an adjustment layer. We can use glows to make everything pop even further, and most importantly, use the CC vignette effect to darken the edges of the scene to create this high-end motion graphic style. From here, I want to expand on lighting for the fourth style as this is a super easy trick. What we can do is make all of our layers 3D, except for like adjustment layers, of course, then create a new point light. You can simply parent the light to any graphic that is animating and that light should follow it, thus changing the focus or the lighting of your scene. Additionally, you should consider adjusting the intensity of the light to change the brightness of your scene. Also, I would consider using the glow effect on your main object your light is attached to, but overall, this is a very good technique to easily add lighting dimension to anything. But now, congratulations, the fifth and final technique is about creating a professional glow on an individual object without plugins. I really think this is the best glow method that I know of. So on a white layer, you can use the Gaussian blur effect and set it to exactly five. Now, use the drop shadow effect, set the distance to zero, the softness to 20 and select the glow color of your choice then duplicate the effect and set the softness to 80. now of course use the glow effect set this to a and b colors and sawtooth b greater than a finally set your color to the drop shadow color duplicate the effect and of course adjust the glow values until you have a nice glow for your scene and if you like try using the noise effect and set it to around five percent to create a cinematic glow style right here in after effects if you want to create reflections, watch my previous video linked below. Subscribe to be the best and always be creating.